right, I think we're going to get started. My name is uh, Aaron Blaisdell. I'm a professor, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a professor of psychology and behavioral neuroscience at UCLA. Uh, I'm going to give some brief opening remarks to kind of kick this whole shindig off this morning. And what I want to do is I want to start by saying just a brief history of how AHS came to be and where we've come since we started. So back in 2009, I met Brent Pottinger, who couldn't be here to this one, this one event this year. Um, and uh, I guess getting a medical, medical degree is kind of busy. <laughs> so, but he was an aspiring medical student to be. And I was uh, you know, an associate professor at UCLA. And we got to get know each other through the paleo and ancestral health movement that during those early years, you know, the late 2008, 2009 period. And we attended an event at UCLA that was about physiology and new directions for physiology. And we were sitting there watching each talk and at the conclusion of each talk. And each talk was interesting because they were discussing latest research on physiology and human health and disease that all had implications for evolutionary mismatch, right? Which is the kernel idea from the paleo movement is that there's an evolutionary mismatch that is a source of many of our common afflictions, illnesses, chronic disease in our modern society. And so we're sitting there with that knowledge and seeing at the conclusion of every talk, and now we have an idea of another target for a pharmaceutical intervention or pharmacological uh, intervention, right, to be developed. And that's the status quo in academic uh, and medical science. And we were thinking, man, if we just had a symposium of our own where at the end of each slide is like, and here's what you can do to take matters in your own hand and take control of your own life, not that everything's going to be rosy, but, you know, as a, a first line of trying to do something to help yourself, we thought that would be great. And that was the genesis of the idea of the Ancestral Health Symposium. So we had our first symposium uh, at UCLA in 2011. And so here we are five years later. We've had one every year except a little glitch prevented us from having it last year, which was supposed to be here, right? But uh, due to some scheduling things that were out of our control, we weren't able to do that. But so we delayed it to this year. But we are back and bolder than ever. <laughs> I can't take credit for that one. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> thanks. And so what I want to say is that really what ancestral health is about is this idea of evolutionary mismatch and how we can look at our own lifestyle, our own modern life, uh, how we feel, how we think, how we raise our kids, how we get food from and, and transport food, how, you know, grow food, everything, every facet of our society, how we build social relationships, and look at that through the lens of evolutionary mismatch with what do our bodies expect based on how they've been adapted by natural selection? And that's not like a single easy answer. There's going to be at multiple scales and levels of analysis. There'll be different answers. Um, and, but that's the point, is to start looking at our health from that perspective, to bring evolutionary medicine into our own lives and into the practice and hopefully into the academic and science practicing uh, model as well. And that was the, the other idea about starting AHS was there was lots of talk in the blogosphere back then. Um, all these ideas were floating around. But at the time, they were being shunned pretty much by the academic community. I had hit a lot of roadblocks talking to my colleagues about these ideas. And a lot of it was considered woo-woo or, you know, it's just, what's the point? And so w we met a lot of resistance at the time. And I think that I wanted to start this conference and the society as a way to bring academics in and show them and have them p talk about their research, but also see th that there's a genuine interest out there in people wanting to uh, address their own health issues through an understanding of evolutionary mismatch. And it looks like that the symposium's grown every year. I mean, we were off to a, a little bit of a, a, a you know, troubling start in early on with some of the um, contentious issues that we had, uh, like the notorious uh, uh, carb wars.
But I think, you know, every child that's born goes through some stumbling blocks as they're developing. And I think we're past the toddler stage even by this point. And I think that as you see the, the, the growth in the depth of the talks, the breadth of the topics that were present at this uh, uh, conference this year, it's just stunning. And it's just going to continue to grow as we continue to expand and view all aspects of the human condition, the world condition, through this idea of evolutionary mismatch and human effect on the world. So with that in mind, that's the spirit that I want to start this conference today. So I want to welcome you all here to AHS 16. Okay, that was the rah-rah stuff. And um, in a moment, I'm going to hand it over to Amanda Oakley to talk a little bit about some of the logistics. Uh, and then we'll, after that, we're going to um, kick off um, pretty much immediately with a little bit of a, um, a preview of all the posters. So if you're in the room, stay in the room because we're going to um, keep rolling with that. But before we get to the poster previews, uh, just w should go over some basics about how the conference is going to run, what to expect. Um, and what I'll tell you, uh, Amanda's going to fill you in on other aspects of this, but the thing I should say is that the way the talks are going to run, there are two rooms for the talks, this room and this is west and then east room, which is just a few doors down. And there's going to, for those of you who are giving talks, there's going to be somebody standing, uh, sitting over here in front of you who's going to have a sign or an, a, a series of signs. And you have a 40-minute slot. All the talks this year are the same length. They're a 40-minute time slot. 30 minutes for your talk and the last 10 minutes for Q&A. So what they're going to do is they're going to start timing you from the time you start speaking. And then at 25 minutes in, when you have five minutes left for the talk part, they're going to flash the sign that says five minutes. When you have one minute left into that 30 minutes, they'll show a one minute sign. And when your time is up for the 30 minute part, they'll show you a sign that says stop. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to stop. That means if you want to now bring your, your talk to a conclusion so you have nice 10 minutes to interact with the audience, I've got to Q&A, and we have microphones set up in the middle of the room for that, um, we can do that. If you are on a roll and you're like, forget it. I'm just going to eat into my Q&A time I can finishing up what I'm going to talk about. That's your decision. As a speaker, you can do that. But what we're going to do is when you're now, now because it's a 40-minute talk, you've got to stop at the 30-minute point. Once it's 35 minutes and you really only have five minutes left till you have to leave the stage, we're going to again do the five minute. And then when you're 39 minutes into the 40-minute talk, <laughs> we're going to do the one minute. And when it's 40 minutes, we're going to say stop, and the chair is going to get up and escort you off the stage. <laughs> and in the kindest possible manner. No big hooks. Don't worry. But we know it's sometimes it's, you get in a, on a roll, and, it, and it's hard to think about the time maintenance. So we're there to help you with that. So I just wanted to make that announcement now to kind of explain how it is. So all, even the audience members understand what we're doing up here and that uh, everybody's being treated fairly in the same way to make sure that all the other talks uh, uh, speakers get their chance to give a full presentation. Okay? And with that, I will hand it over to Amanda. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. We're really excited with a really, really jam-packed schedule this year. Can everyone hear me in the back? Yeah. Um, so I'm here with the non-rah-rah stuff, just the quick uh, housekeeping. Um, so as Erin mentioned, we have talks happening in both rooms at the same time. Um, so you don't need to worry if you're unable to, to make it to one room or the other if there are two things happening at the same time. Everything's being recorded by our AV team and will be posted on YouTube, um, possibly even the same day that the talks are happening, but definitely within a couple of days. So you can take your time uh, with our exhibitors or with friends or at lunch. Um, AHS is as much about meeting people and building communities, so if you choose not to attend the talks, you can always catch them on YouTube after. Um, so our poster presentations and book signings and exhibitors will all be taking place in the central ballroom, so uh, please go and visit them. The posters and book signings will be on Friday and Saturday. Uh, movement sessions will be happening as well during the breaks, um, so you can meet outside, uh, just outside of registration for those. Uh, what else? Oh, we have a completely digital schedule this year, so you may have realized that we're not handing out anything at registration. Um, th we do have the link at registration, that, um, so you can sign up for an account on the, the SCED website and get uh, updates and a daily schedule sent to you if you choose. 
Um, we did have one change already. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Mark Berhanna was not able to make it for his talk. So you will notice that there is a gap uh, in the schedule uh, for his talk. Um, there is Wi-Fi here. So UCB Guest is our, our Wi-Fi. There's no log on. You just click um, to join the network. Um, there are fountains outside and bathrooms as well, and uh, a cafe downstairs uh, for anyone who wants to go down and get coffee and tea. And uh, any questions, you can find us at registration. Uh, volunteers are wearing green shirts, so um, come and find us with anything. We're happy to help, and uh, please put your phones on vibrate. So I'll hand it back to, to Aaron, and thanks a lot for joining us.